Hey everyone, uh, it's Carlos. It's a little bit after 3 a.m. And I'm at a part of the pipeline where I looked at, I remember looking at the map. And I believe I'm on the border, I'm on Province Line Road on the border of uh, Mammoth and Burlington counties. So, yeah, I'm just shining it on a light. I'm taking a little break. Um, but, uh,. Yeah, I'm thinking that, you know, in the fight against this pipeline, I know it goes through the Pinelands for a fair amount, so the commission could, could say no to it. But I'm also wondering what role the counties themselves have, and I believe it's in three counties, Burlington, Ocean, but also possibly in Mammoth. I'm not really sure about Mammoth because it's only on the border. It never, I don't know if it really goes deep in just, you know, on the surface. Um, so I'm very curious about the, uh, <sighs> excuse me, a little getting winded. Um, but um, anyways, so here, let me see if I could go out on the road if it gets a little lighter. But yeah, Province, oh, Province Line Road. Um, yeah, I don't know if you could even see the, I put away my night light too. Um, there's another light down there. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk. So I'm good. Um, so Province Line Road divides the counties, maybe for a pretty good stretch. But the uh, pipeline, I think, is on it for I don't know, a mile and a half, two miles, something like that. Um, but, um, yeah, so that makes me think that there's other ways, even if the vote by the Pilots Commission doesn't go our way, there's other things we can do to try, legally, to try and get the uh, pipeline to be uh, halted or delayed by having one of the two or one of the three counties somehow assert their power and at least appeal it and try and um, slow it, so, uh, because in my mind, fracking, and I'll, you know what, I'll add this in the description, fracking, um, is doubly bad, or in two different realms, uh, environmentally, obviously, it's a horror show, so fracking is one of the, uh, worst things we can do to the environment, um, it's, you know, it's just blatantly terrible. Uh, but, and it's just mining at levels that we never should ever be able to think that we should be at. Like, there's a huge natural unbalance created when we do that. Um, but I wanted to say that fracking also... Um, what is it called, the energy return on energy invested, so economically, now I'm speaking, is uh, known to be very, very inefficient. You almost have to put almost as much energy in to get a bunch of natural gas as you get back out. Um, definitely the case with oil fracking, like in the Bakken, um, and really pretty much what that means is it's a Ponzi scheme that's being funded by credit. And um, the banks, a lot of the fracking companies, I don't know as far as the pipeline companies, but the actual drilling companies uh, are almost bankrupt all the time and the banks keep giving them extension loans. Um, but they're basket cases and that being the case, fracking might actually go bust, and it's, it will. It's, it's almost like a mathematical thing. So chances are this pipeline, if it is built at some point, will just be here without anything running through it, um, or at least without any fracked gas running through it, because fracking is self-defeating um, economically. But of course, we don't want it built because of the damage in the building and the high risks of having the gas compressor station and all these other things. So 
the longer we can delay it, and the lo longer fracking goes, the more it will prove itself to be economically untenable. Um, so even halting things by months here and there, if landowners stand up and appeal things and more government agencies get involved on both sides of the issue, um, it's a political tactic that uh, could really, you know, you, you only have to do it at one link in the chain of the pipeline to really throw it off. Um, and then they have to come up with either a new route or abandon it. So if we could make it so, uh, if we can deter the corporations enough that they just give up um, because they realize they're not going to make money, then we've succeeded. Um, but it, corporations are very strange these days too because the CEOs still get their bonuses even if the corporation is a losing thing. So um, there's sort of an uh, interesting dynamic in there. All right, um, so I'm making this a nice long video. Of course, I'm doing it when it's the middle of the night, so I don't think it's going to attract any or many people. Um, but if you're going this long with me, now I'm going to talk about islandization, um, which is also called fragment habitat fragmentation, but I learned it as islandization, which I think is a really cool term. Um, and basically, and it makes perfect sense, I kind of, I think I always thought this way, but basically this road, uh, whether a pipeline's running through it or not, um, cuts right in the middle of a, um, of a, you know, what would have been a contiguous forest. At the moment, it would have, it would definitely have been a forest because there's forest on both sides of me. New Jersey was primarily forest too. But when you do that, um, even though the road is only a small, you know, amount of acreage when you run the whole length of it, uh, compared to the rest of the forest, a lot of, a lot of species need interior, need lots of interior to survive. And they, the, when you cut, um, through an ecosystem, the plants change and you have more borders, you have more edge, but you have less, um, interior space so biodiversity diminishes that's why bears don't live even if you know there's a bunch of parks right in a row but there's roads dividing them they're less likely to be there than if there's a contiguous forest that's even a little bit smaller than those all combined because it's all one um, and I don't know like which species it occurs to but there's certain species that won't cross the road whether they're insects, um, nematodes, or fungi don't cross the road, you know, they're, and they run through the forest floor the whole length. So that's a huge, uh, a whole kingdom that's kind of cut in half when you put a road through. So the pipeline will only widen that divide and disturb, um, more things with the vibrations of the gas moving through. So that's part of it. But islandization in general is sort of how you cookie cutter the world and then um, the world becomes less holistic and there's all these problems of separation and analysis that basically start to have negative effects. So. I thought of this earlier and I wanted to talk about it, but also something I noticed now that was interesting is I'm walking through and the noise level changes of the amount of crickets and all the other um, locusts and whatever I'm really hearing and frogs occasionally it changes when there's a house. And even if it's a house in the woods and it's a little bit set back, I hear it get quieter. It's not as noisy with wildlife. And that's sort of like the house itself, even though it's not cutting through, it does diminish the uh, depth of the forest at that part. Um, so there's less habitat for all these, the whole chain of the animals. Um, 
And actually sometimes that's really when mosquitoes proliferate because there's nothing more advanced higher up on the food chain to eat them that can survive in these areas. So mosquitoes end up sort of being the top of the, the food chain. Um, and of course they love eating the humans that, uh, that enabled them to have that ecosystem. But um, that's something Barbara also was pointing out, how she doesn't have a mosquito problem, even though she is lots, she's a pond and she has lots of water in the area because the frogs take care of them. And um, I do believe bats also eat mosquitoes. And there's, if you fish, uh, they also eat mosquito larvae. And um, there's plenty of things that would eat mosquitoes so that they would never really be a problem. But um, the way we chop up the places we live, we end up, um, I think I'm getting to the house where uh, water was left for me. So I'm going to, let me see. I think so, yeah. I wish you could see. <laughs> yeah. Mm, thank you, Jean. She left me um, the water and uh, I think some food that I asked for. Yeah. Okay. Good. This is nice. So I know you can't see, but you can hear it. Um, yeah. So people over pipelines—they're helping me out with this trip. And um, it's nice to be here at a place that I was just uh, not even 48 hours ago. So they're inside sleeping. So um, I'm just going to get the food and keep on going. But um, yeah, uh, thanks for listening. If you listen to all this, <laughs> apologize for my monotone voice. I kind of feel hushed by everything and I, I, I'd like to speak quietly. Uh, all right, that's all. Um, I'm going to end this here, and maybe I'll do a video closer to daytime, maybe early morning, uh, early like around sunrise or something. All right, bye.